Hello, welcome to another instalment of Crucible Gold. We know that we'd love to be watching live action, but in its place, we're taking you on a trip down memory lane. We've been talking about maximums. We had a hat trick from Hendry. We had a hat trick from O'Sullivan. But four other men have climbed the mountain to produce a moment of perfection. And we're taking you back to the flares and the tashes and the talent of 1983, where we had not one, but two world champions going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the last 16. Cliff Thorburn had won the title in 1980, Terry Griffiths the year before in 79. This was for the very first Max at the Crucible. History beckoned for the man from Canada. one way of getting them I suppose and staying on the black as well my word that's a bonus Yes, what a lovely fluke that was that Cliff Thorburn got because these reds are now spread open beautifully. Nine. I couldn't possibly wish to have the balls in a better position than this. Sixteen. Well, Cliff has gone through a little bit too far on that shot. I think, I think the red may go into the centre pocket. Perfect angle on the black here. Well, Cliff didn't uh, get into that one as he wanted to, wanted to hold the cue ball on the other reds and he's just slipped out of position a little bit now. You can clip this one in and come around the back of the black but uh, not quite as nice as it should have been. I 
think he was a little bit fortunate there after getting out of position to have such a easy shot to just drop it onto the black again. Gradually finding it a little more difficult. Again, he's got a red here on the left hand corner pocket. And that's a good shot. A soft screw there just to hold him on the black. I think he can see the black. And there's a nice picture of the Thorburn stance, very square to the table. on his misfortunes there with that fluke by Cliff at the start of this uh, break. Oh, that's a nice shot. Well, this will be the eighth black. Cliff's uh, main objective will be to win the frame, but he'll certainly be looking for a very big break here. He'll feel very much happier when the frame is actually safe. And to do that, he needs another two reds. And then he can relax and concentrate on making a very big break because there is a marvellous opportunity here. Yes, there's also a marvellous prize, uh, Rex. Some £3,000 for the uh, highest break. And that's worth a night out. Well, Cliff will be looking for something better than just the highest break here, Jack, because he's still taking all blacks and £10,000 for a maximum break and for a new championship record of one four six five thousand pounds Well, I'm going to break a rule here, Rex. Every time we talk about these wonderful breaks, they go and break down, so I'm going to let him finish this break. I'm a wee bit superstitious. Well, this next one will be the tenth black. And the adrenaline will be really flowing with uh, Cliff at the moment because he knows that this is the type of opportunity that doesn't crop up very often. Eighty-one. 
one. And still perfect position to just get the red nearest to the black and back onto the black again. Hasn't quite stunned that as much as he wanted to. Left himself a little bit finer angle on the black than he wanted. He'll get position on the red without any problem, but just made the black a little bit more difficult. And Griffiths, quite aware that he's lost the frame now, I am sure that he is hoping and praying that uh, Cliff Thorburn will do this. Ninety-seven. Well, Cliff this time uh, needs to get round the back of those uh, reds to leave himself a choice of either red into the corner or red into the centre. Well, now it's got to get on this uh, a red in such a way to get back on the black. So now this is Have a, little break here. a difficult. <laughs> well, what a what a sensible fellow. At a stage like this, with just one red left, he stops and blows his nose and says, let's have a break. And if he can take this red and the black, the colors will be on their spots. Oh, what a moment this is. It is truly electric here. If only we could tell the audience not to applaud just for the remainder of this break. stop playing on the other table well now this is the real shot uh, that matters Jack to get on the yellow if he can do that he could be well on He hasn't come quite far enough. He's left himself a tough shot, but that's 15 reds and 15 blacks that he's taken now. Well, this is carrying 10,000 pounds for the highest break, 5,000 for a championship break, and 3,000 for the highest break. So we're talking about 18,000 pounds on this. <laughs> Well, that was a marvellous yellow that uh, Cliff Thorburn took then. And Bill Werbenick, as tense as he is. Yeah. And that 
is perfect. That is perfect. going to be another moment in Cliff's life when he's going to be so tense as this. Cliff went on to win the match and played Steve Davis in the final, the Nugget taking his second crown. Let's fast forward nine years to Jimmy White against Tony Drago. White 8-4 up, 13th frame, and there was nothing unlucky about being in the crowd for this. Took a bit of a flyer at that one. Thirty-two. I suppose he could go into the reds this time, but there's a couple of loose reds out there and an angle to get on them, either of them. But going into the pack really gives Jimmy an opportunity of making a big break. Red split very nicely. Yes, and I think the fact that he did go into the pack... This is all reds, all black so far. Forty-eight. 
Doesn't look too happy. Might have just run a little bit too far. He might be able to bend it with a little bit of side. She's done. So, don't think Jimmy at the moment has got anything in his sights but the maximum. Fifty seven. Sixty four. <coughs> Just a little short of pace to be ideal to stay on the black. John says that's what Jimmy's thinking about. All reds, all black. Being much easier to play for the blue. Seventy-two. Seventy-three. Anything but that. Still a red in that far right corner pocket. In actual fact, my colleague Ray Edmonds had just reminded me that in the British Open this year, Tony Drago was sat down while James Watanar made a 147. Can history repeat itself? Needs a bit of luck. Not bad. The rest that was eighty eight. Eighty nine. Ninety six. That's a pity. Is he covered on both reds? Or will that red just pot? If it does, he'll have to just drop it in and leave himself a difficult black. now what was in Jimmy's mind <laughs> he needs an angle desperately on this red and I think he's got it one hundred and thirteen perfect Twenty 
Well, Jimmy White said he was in the best form for a long, long yeah, while coming here. Only Cliff Thorburn has made this break once before at the Crucible. 129. Well, it's getting to me as well, but it's not too bad. He's left-handed, just stun the blue in and leave yourself just a pink to roll in, although nothing's easy now. 134. 100,000 pound for Jimmy White if he can knock the pink and black in. <laughs> quite, quite magnificent. Jimmy White creates history at the Crucible Theatre. A magnificent 147. Tony Drago hugs him. The frame score doesn't really matter, but it's Jimmy White who takes the frame before the mid-session. Jimmy White proving there once again that he is one of the sport's ultimate entertainers. So too is Mark Williams. Any more laid back, he'd be horizontal. But when this Welshman's in the mood, he's absolutely irresistible to watch. Two years after his second world title, he was en route to demolishing Rob Milkins when he produced this. To show the Crucible crowd what you can do so he'd be a little bit embarrassed at the uh, at the score line here yes it's going to be a very tough game at times eight nine but he's sitting at uh, number 28 in the world and he's still provisionally 28 so he's stayed in the top 32 But I think Mark Williams' uh, plan over the next couple of seasons will be to try and get back to the number one spot that he held. 70. He's one of these, Mark. He makes the game look ridiculously easy when he's going well. Not the best of angles to go into them, but he wants a half ball contact on the red that's at the back of the bunch. He doesn't want to hit that full ball if he goes into them here. Not bad. Just watch him. A little bit thinner than he intended. That's why the whites ran away a little bit, but... He's queuing so well, you wouldn't expect him to miss this. <laughs> Not a bad start. Five reds, five blacks. Forty. Fifty-six. Fifty-seven. 
Just a wee bit short, but he's still got... Well, I thought he'd got one to the middle, but the pink's blocking that. So that could spoil the possibility of Mark's first ever maximum break in tournament play. There's 14,000 pounds for the highest break in this year's Embassy World Championship. And that... 65. I was going to say, I thought he played for the pink, but he's got a bigger prize on his mind. tell you one thing the crowd know exactly what's happening here but can he somehow force an angle to get back up to the black I think he might be able to just miss the green but can he drop on the black oh he needs a flick on the red a flick on the red would help it 73 <laughs> he was going to stretch round there and put the cue underneath his body, but he can still he can still pull this shot off. It's a very very thin one, but there'll be a big round of applause if this drops in. I can tell you, it's there, it's there. Eighty. The prize at the World Championship has always been one four seven. That's one hundred and forty-seven thousand pounds if you make one hundred and forty-seven break. Where's this cue ball going? Oh, it's another difficult one. It's there. He's already in the last 16, the frame well and truly over. Well, I'm sitting in the commentary box with the former world champion here who coaches Mark Williams. Terry, there's never been a Welsh player has made a 147 at the Crucible. Well, he won't get a better chance than this. Perfect there now. He's going to take the more difficult one. He's perfectly on this to get back for the black. Good thinking, this. Get in. 105. Well, I think Robert Milkins would love Mark Williams to make a maximum here. I don't think a player has ever made one to one clinch a match. 130. 120. Perfect. 122. Oh, it got a heavy contact slightly there. But he's okay. A little bit of history. 120. He'll be the first ever Welsh player to make a maximum at the Crucible. Come on, Mark. Under hit it just a little bit.
Get in. Welshman riding high once again. Now Ali Carter is a gutsy player and it took him a couple of years to get to grips with the Cruz. He first made the quarters in 2007 and was back in the last eight the following year taking on former champion the force Peter Ebden. Seven frames apiece and then he comes to the table in the 15th for a moment he has since said proved absolutely crucial in the match and his career. If Carter can win this frame, he can't be behind overnight. And if he did win it, he would be pushing in the last frame of the day 16. for a 9-7 overnight lead. 17. It's been a 24. very good session. The first frame this evening, uh, I think everybody was fearing the worst. There was a lot of balls missed, and it just seemed to be a long, protracted safety battle. But since then, Clive, we've had some superb snooker, haven't we? From both players. 25. Well, we have. The lowest, highest break, if I can put it like that, has been uh, 55 in the ninth frame. That came from Carter. We've had 143 and 84 and 113 from Ebden, 79 and 81 from Carter. But in between all those efforts, some, some tactical play, some searching for openings. And some mistakes, which adds to the fun for us though not the players. Yes, I think the only thing that has been, uh, well, disappointed both players is the long potting. Probably Ali Carter, not as much as Peter Ebden. But when they've got in around the black spot area, well, how many times have we thought about maximum <laughs> breaks this evening? A couple. Peter's already had a one, four, three. Five reds, five blacks. Never has 
made a 147 in competition. 48. I think if someone said to him now, OK, we'll give you the frame. If you'll forget about the maximum, he might well 49. take it. Because it's winning that's of prime importance. <laughs> Nevertheless, 56. still doesn't have to strain for black ball position. And if he does get to 73 with reds and blacks, you can bet he'd be going for the maximum. bit short 64 in terms of retaining black ball position or ideal black ball position <coughs> he's had a good look at that plant improved his chances although he's a little low on the black one to us in the left corner Seven he's walked two. round Seven three. it's just not remarkable Clive or not we've just gone through the highs and the lows of Pete Revden having a go at a maximum and now next frame do you know when I was playing, I didn't realise the game was this easy. <laughs> it's certainly a terrific standard of break making. Well, he's OK. He's OK. I thought it'd gone wrong for a minute. But he's nicely on this red to the right corner. Well past the winning post in the frame. Carter's highest break in competition, 144, was made here last year. That was the line he took before, and it was a dangerous line. And I'm looking at his body language. I don't think he's quite on this red. Let's have a look. Mm, he's going to have to play this with right-hand side and try and turn this red over. Playing ball, he can't get to the potting angle. He could do it, though, with a, a tracer side. And he's done it. <laughs> Oh, 
It's a lot of money. But uh, he mustn't think about that. He's just got to play this shot by shot. <laughs> just asking for the cue ball to be clean while he tries to work. There's, the, there's a one red open. I'm not certain about the availability of these two reds in the middle of the table. If the bottom one goes, it's difficult to say from where we're sitting. He's got to run past the pink. He's played it in perfect. Now, if those two reds are not available, he 96. can pot this and just just a little touch cannon off those two reds as he slides by and he'll bring those two reds into play. Didn't do that, so like does that tell us one of these reds go? The bottom one, does it pot? Or does he have to play the cannon off the black? We'll soon know. Oh, perfect. Well, he had to play the cannon off the black. He didn't want to risk it off the red previous, but he could not have hit that better. 104. What a chance. Any angle on the black will do, but he's got to get high on this red unless he decides to play for the red in one of the middle pockets. Funnily enough, that's what Ronnie O'Sullivan did yesterday. Then it can't go wrong. He's played for it in the middle pocket. It's as good as he could have hoped for. 112. Just play a screw shot back to where the cue ball is now. <laughs> He's got the skill to complete this maximum. Has he also got the nerve? That's what he's going to take now, Clive. Nerve and plenty of it. Thank you. One hundred and twenty-two. It's not just the money. The half share of one hundred and fifty-seven thousand pounds. It's the distinction. The distinction of having made a maximum in this theatre of dreams. And a video or DVD to show your grandchildren. Big moment in his career. Now this was always going to be the one because his distance between the blue and the pink. Play a good one, son. It's okay. Pressure. Thank you. Lots and lots of pressure. Okay, deep breath now. Remember your technique. Marvellous! Marvellous! Alan Carter's first maximum in competition. What a place to make it. The best place. 
It's the first time two maximums have ever been made in the same tournament. And after that, he's got to go out to compose himself. Carter leads by eight frames to seven. Well, both players have left the arena. I think Peter Ebden was just as pleased that Ali got one. That's the true sportsman that Peter Ebden is. But what a magic moment. Clive in the well, that frame helped propel Ali Carter across the line against Peter Ebden into the single table set up at the Crucible for the first time. And as we all know, he went on to make the first of his two appearances in the Crucible finals, both against the Rocket in 2008 and 2012. Carter... Thorburn, Williams, White, four of the men who've produced the moments of perfection.